Good day, everyone, and welcome to Filipino Science Hub Ed for a lesson guide on physics. I am Mark Cortez, a physics and chemistry module creator for FSH Ed and a graduate of BS Mathematics and Science Teaching from UPLB. Today, our lesson guide will be on impulse and momentum, which is a grade 9 science topic for fourth quarter. Now, for our bigger picture, and as usual, we have to look into our content standards and most essential learning competencies as suggested by the Department of Education. For our content standards, the learners demonstrate an understanding of impulse and momentum. And for our most essential learning competencies, we must be able to relate impulse and momentum to collision of objects. For this lesson guide, we will be focusing on defining and understanding momentum and impulse by solving some problems, okay? Now, for the definition of momentum, momentum is simply defined as mass in motion. And when we are studying momentum, it is important to simply look at an object's mass and velocity. So we know that all objects have mass, and when it is in motion, then we know it has momentum. So what's an example of this? A car. A car that is moving has momentum, for we know it has both mass and is in motion. On the flip side, if an object is not moving, a car or a car is in full stop, it does not have momentum so it is, since it is not in motion. Now, the amount of momentum which an object has is dependent on these two variables, how much matter is moving or our mass, and how fast is the matter moving or our velocity. Okay. Which we will see in our mathematical expression. So momentum can be mathematically expressed as P is equal to M times V. So P or the small letter P is what we use to symbolize or represent momentum. While M is used to represent the mass of an object of the object times v, which is used to represent the velocity of the said object. For its standard units, kilogram is used in mass, while velocity uses meters per second. Now, since velocity is a vector quantity, we can also assume that momentum is a vector quantity, which we will be able to observe later on in our sample problems. Okay. Now, can a bus and a bullet have the same momentum based on our definitions in mathematical equations earlier? Now, let's write again um, the equation for our momentum. P is equal to the product of mass and velocity. So, if we were to take into consideration the momentum of each object here, so the momentum of the bus would be m times v. So we could see that um, the mass of the bus would be generally greater than the bullet, okay? It's relatively greater than the bullet, but its velocity could be um, relatively considered as lower compared to a bullet, which we assume, by the way, is shot from a gun. So, yung mass naman ng ating bullet ay mas mababa compared to the bus. Pero yung velocity niya naman ay sobrang laki. Okay? So, actually, the answer to this question is yes. That theoretically, they could actually have the same momentum. Okay? It's just that we have to alter their ba their velocities or, um, accordingly. Okay? And here we can see that the relationship between mass and velocity with momentum is actually a direct relationship where when we increase the mass of the object, we increase its momentum. And when we increase its velocity, we also increase its momentum. And likewise, when we decrease the mass and the velocity of our object, we also decrease the momentum. Okay. So to further understand momentum, let's head on to our sample 
problems. Before I start answering this sample problem, let me first establish our notation. When our objects are traveling to the right or eastward, we will be using the symbol, the positive symbol, as our notation. While um, when the object is traveling to the left or westward, we will be using the negative symbol as our notation. To denote, so we will be using these two symbols to denote the direction of our object. Okay, so let me, so for the first sample problem, let me read. A student with a mass of 62 kilograms is walking eastward through the hallway with a velocity of 2 meters per second. Calculate for the momentum of the student. Now for this problem, we will be using the Gresa method where we first list the given values. So we have mass, which is 62.0 kilograms and velocity positive again since it is moving eastward or to the right positive two meters per second and what is being asked from us is the momentum so let we symbol we use the symbol letter p and we use the equation p is equal to mass times velocity for our solution we simply substitute the values to our equation. So P is equal to 62 point there we go, 0 kilograms. So let me remind you to always include your units when putting down or writing down your solutions. P is equal to 62.0 kilograms times the velocity which is 2 meters per second. And we just simply multiply these two values to get our answer which is momentum of our student is 100 sorry 124 kilograms per meter I'm ah, sorry kilograms meters per second so again we have here a positive sign just to denote that our student is walking eastward or to the right Okay. There we go. For our second sample problem, now this one, this problem uses a different direction. We will be using it's traveling towards the westward direction or to the left. So a jet ski is traveling westward towards the West Philippine Sea with a velocity of 12 meters per second and has a, has a mass of 363 kilograms. So let us again write our given velocity. We use negative 12 meters per second. Again, why do we use negative? Because it is traveling in the westward direction or towards the left. And it has a mass of 363 kilograms. So what is required from this equation is Again, momentum, so we use P, and the equation that we will be using is the same equation we have been using earlier. So P is equal to M times V. And for our solution, simply substitute the values. So mass is 363 kilograms multiplied with the velocity, which is tw negative 12 meters per second. And to get our answer, simply again multiply these values together and we get negative 4,356 kilogram meters per second. Okay. Our previous example showed constant momentum, meaning there were no changes in the velocity of the objects as well, as well as their mass. How then will we consider if there is a change in momentum? This is where impulse comes in. Impulse is defined as a measurement of change in momentum. An object's momentum changes when we apply force in an amount of time. 
For example, inutusan ako ng mama ko na mag general cleaning sa kwarto. So the bed, which has quite a mass but is not in motion, meaning has no momentum, has to be moved para maginis yung ilalim. Upon pushing or pulling the bed, I applied force to it. Since, the, since it moved during the time I applied force, its momentum changed as well from zero to a certain amount. The force I applied over an amount of time which caused the momentum of the bed to change is what we call impulse. Impulse can be mathematically expressed as capital I, Impulse Momentum Theorem This theorem allows us to relate both impulse and momentum together, as stated in its name. And st this theorem states that the impulse in an object is equivalent to the change in momentum of the object. So we have I for impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So earlier, as we've established, when an object experiences a force in in a um, given amount of time, which we call impulse, it would also have a change in its momentum. Okay, so let me change this um, equation into its um, expanded equation, mass times change in velocity. So this theorem basically says that the value of force multiplied to the change in time or impulse is equal to the value of mass times a change in velocity. So in this theorem, we also assume that the mass of the object is constant. 
okay? And the change in velocity causes the change in the momentum, okay? Now, in order to check um, and verify, let us take a look at their units. Using their units, the equation becomes newtons times second for impulse is equal to kilograms times meters per second. And we see that both sides are actually the same because when we express newtons further into its um, SI units, we see that newtons is the same. It's kilograms times meters per second squared. And if we um, multiply this with seconds, we can see that the squared here and the second here will be cancelled. So it would provide us um, kilograms per meters per second is equal to kilograms times meters per second. So we can see that both sides of the equation are practically the same but are expressed in different units. And this will prove handy in solving problems later on. Okay. Since we are sure that the equation is equal and it is a working equation, we can easily modify the equation to get the values of specific variables in a system. So here is our um, general equation. So in, in, in our solving problems, we will only have to actually remember this. And um, since it's equal and it's a working equation, we can easily um, isolate any variable we want in a system. So we can get force in one side of the equation by um, dividing it, uh, with dividing time, or we can get mass by dividing the change in velocity to both sides of the equation. And we can also get um, the specific variables, like change in time, we can get the time initial and time final of the object. And also in velocity, we can also get the um, initial velocity and its final velocity. So you see that um, this general equation is very handy and is what we will use in solving our word problems later on. So in fact, when we rearrange the impulse momentum equation by dividing time in both sides of the equation, we are led to the definition of force in terms of momentum. Okay, so let's rewrite um, our general equation. Force times the change in time is equal to mass times the change in velocity and if we divide if we isolate f again we're going to manipulate the general equation for to derive force um, we'll be um, dividing the change in time in both sides of the equation and we will get force is equal to mass times change in velocity over change in time. And if we look at it closer, we can see that actually this change in velocity and this change in time is the same as acceleration, okay? And if we replace that with acceleration, we'll find a very um, common or an equation that we've encountered earlier, which is force equal to mass times acceleration, which is Newton's second law, of, um, second law of motion, which describes force. So this, these two are the same, these two equations are the same, but this one expresses force in terms of momentum. Now, the impulse momentum theorem also allows us to use its equation for problems involving collisions, which is how we can meet our MELCs, most essential learning competencies, wherein we relate both impulse and momentum with collisions. Now, during collisions of objects, objects experience force, of specific, force for a specific amount of time, or what we call as impulse which changes its momentum. So the impulse can either speed up 
slow down, or change the direction of the objects. Using the impulse momentum theorem, we can safely say that the impulse experienced by the object, again, just writing our equation, is equal to the change in momentum of the object. And the following equation can be used to understand force and collision. So again, this is the equation that we've derived earlier, which is force um, in terms of um, momentum. So when we manipulate or when we yeah when we manipulate this equation, for example, when we increase the mass of the object and the velocity of the object, we also increase the force. Meanwhile, when we increase the time, the change in time, we decrease the value of force. So this is used. These manipulations or this equation um, helps us save lives. So we can generalize that in order for collisions to be less fatal, we reduce the force generated, generated or applied by what, as I mentioned earlier, increasing the amount of time. So when we increase the amount of time, force decreases. So this is the idea behind um, airbags and seat belts. Seat belts and airbags help in increasing the time passengers change their velocity or decelerate during a collision or abrupt stopping, reducing the overall force they will experience. It is also important to note that collisions of different objects will depend on the characteristics of the materials they are made up of. Different objects would, refer, would result to different collisions. Now, collisions will be further discussed in a different learning guide to be posted next week. For our sample problems in impulse and momentum theorem, a bullet is accelerated down the barrel of a gun by hot gases produced in the combustion of gunpowder. What is the average force exerted on a 0.03 kg bullet to accelerate it to a speed of 600 meters per second in a time of 2 milliseconds? So again, we will approach this problem using the Gresham method. So let's first um, write down the given. So we have mass with 0 0.03 kilograms, the mass of the bullet, and we um, have the change in velocity or accelerate, acceleration of the bullet, 600 meters per second. So change in velocity will be denoted as... Um, so we have V final, 600 meters per second, and V initial, which is 0 meters per second. So again, acceleration is just a change in velocity, so we can safely write this um, acceleration, the acceleration of the bullet as such, and the time. We we'll give it time, which is 2.00 milliseconds, or... 0.002 seconds. And as for the required, this problem asks us to look for the average force exerted on the bullet. So we'll be looking for F or force. Now for the equation, let's write it down. We will um, be using the derived equation of force um, as momentum, um, as defined by momentum. From our general equation okay so our general equation is again f times multiplied change in time is equal to mass times change in velocity over change in oh sorry yeah this is our general equation so we want force so we will be needing force so let's isolate this by using again the equation that we have already encountered earlier so change in velocity over change in time okay so for our solution we will just substitute our um, values earlier to this equation okay so force for our solution force is equal to the mass 0 0.03 kilograms 
multiplied to the um, change in velocity, 600 meters per second, minus 0 meters per second over 2, sorry, 0 0.002 seconds. Now, if we input all of this in the calculator, we can get or we find our answer, which is force is equal to 9,000 kilograms times meters per second squared, or simply 9,000 newtons. So, the um, average force needed to be exerted on the bullet in order for it to accelerate to a speed of 600 meters per second in a time of 2 milliseconds is 9,000 newtons. Okay? For our next sample problem, suppose a child drives a bumper car head-on into the side rail, which exerts a force of 4,000 newtons on the car for 0 0.200 seconds. A. What impulse is imparted by this force? B. Find the final velocity of the bumper car if its initial velocity was 2.80 meters per second and the car plus driver has a mass of 200 kilograms. You may neglect friction between the car and the floor. Okay, so let's first answer A. So to answer A, let's again write down our given we have a force is equal to 4,000 newtons and a time of 0 0.200 seconds. And what's being asked of us is impulse. So we know, let's just recall, um, on the um, equation for impulse, which is I is equal to force times time, right? So basically, A is a very simple problem. I is equal to 4,000 newtons times 0 0.200 seconds and we find our answer to be for our impulse to be 800 newtons second okay so how do we um, relate this to momentum so if we are asked um, what would be the momentum of the bumper car it would be or what would be the change in the momentum of the bumper car it would be 800, so change in momentum, if, it, if, if the problem asks, okay? So this is just additional um, information. It would be 800, the change in momentum would be 800 kilograms times meters per second, okay? So since, and we can say this because as we've mentioned earlier, our impulse and momentum theorem states that the impulse of an object is equivalent to the change in its momentum. Okay, so that's a sim. Again, this is just a, a, a simple problem, and we related it to um, the change in momentum. Okay, let's try answering letter B. For letter B, we are tasked to find the final velocity of the bumper car if its initial velocity was 2.0 meters per second and the car plus driver had a mass of 200 kilograms. So to answer B, again, let's list down our given. So let's write down again our force, which is 4,000 newtons time 0 0.200 seconds mass 
200 kilograms. So let's just label. So this is for letter B. And our initial velocity is equivalent to 2.80 meters per second. So this time it's asking for the final velocity. So VF of our bumper car. So what the equation that we can use here is actually our general equation. So we use F force times change in time or time is equal to the mass times the change in velocity or Vf minus Vi. And we already have this, right? F times C. We already have this in our previous um, problem, so in, let, in letter A. So we have this value as 800 newtons per second. So let's just write our solution. So we will be simply um, substituting again our values in the solution. So for our solution, let me just rewrite. Um, we have 800 newtons second. So that's already the force times the time is equal to mass 200 kilograms multiplied to the change in velocity. So we have Vf, which is what we're looking for, minus our initial velocity of 2.8 meters per second. Okay, so what we can do is first divide both sides of the equation with 200 kilograms and move 2.80 meters per second to the other side of the equation by adding it to both sides of the equation. So we will have 800 newtons per second, 200 kilograms minus 2.80 meters per second will give us our so we just manipulated our equation, our general equation with the values in order to find the velocity final. And once we simplify this equation, we find that our velocity final is 1.20 meters per second. For our supplementary materials, here is the egg, do egg drop activity simulation by the physicsclassroom.com. And in this simulation, students will be able to observe the impulse momentum theorem through the egg drop activity. Students will be able to adjust the characteristics and variables, such as the mass and size of the egg, that will help the students grasp the idea of impulse and momentum and how manipulating its variables affects collision. And if you still want to be challenged or want to test out your um, problem-solving skills, you can check out this video by Orga the Organic Chemistry Tutor in YouTube titled The Impulse Momentum Theory Physics Problems. So this video will help you practice solving problems involving the impulse momentum theory and equations, applications on different problems as well as a step-by-step -step solution is well illustrated in the video. And for our references, again, thank you for watching Phil Sci Hub Ed. I hope you got something today regarding impulse and momentum. And watch out for our other videos next week. Thank you and have a great weekend ahead.